Welcome back to the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dubin, and thank you, as always, for taking the time to check out the show. On this week's Sports Now, we'll roll through a quick spring sports update and highlight our poster player of the week before jumping in to some quote-unquote NFL news here on the Interlake Sports Now as a number of Bobcats and Grizzlies products landed with teams following the draft, either on undrafted deals or as many camp invites. So that's exciting stuff. NFL draft season, the gift that keeps on giving. I always said about college football, NFL draft is another one of those. Always something to talk about the draft in here. A couple, nobody got drafted, but following the draft, some guys are going to get opportunities to compete for an NFL team. So we'll go look at what Bobcats and Grizzlies those are. Then we'll close this thing out with a quick look at some Glacier Range Riders news as the Valley's pro baseball team is in an ongoing dispute with the National Park Service regarding the Range Riders logo. We'll get to all that and more on today's Interlake Sports. Now, before we get to all that, quick reminder, today's episode is brought to you by Nomad, one of the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of our local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. All right, thanks as always to our friends at Nomad GCS for the support. Let's dive into this spring sports update in a second because we did have one quick piece of breaking news yesterday that rolled in as Big Fork basketball star and daughter of Big Fork girls basketball coach Braden Gunlock announced her commitment to BYU on Instagram with the following message. Proud to announce my commitment to playing basketball at BYU. Huge thanks to the players and coaching staff for this amazing opportunity. Can't wait to be a part of Cougar Nation. Gunlock was a North Northwest A MVP last year after helping lead the Vals to the state title game in their first year of playing at the Class A level after winning the Class B state championship the year before. Gunlock is only a junior, so next year she is poised to be one of the top girls basketball players in the Treasure State once again, no doubt about that. Overall, big congrats to Brady Gunlock on the commitment to BYU, and congrats to her family as well. Like I said, her mom is the Big Fork basketball coach, Courtney Gunlock a former guest of the Interlake Sports Now. So big shout out to them. No doubt about that. BYU, definitely a great school athletic-wise. A lot of good sports at BYU. Football, basketball, whatever it may be. All right. The Glacial Wolfpack softball team. Let's start that spring sports update. The Glacial Wolfpack softball squad picked up a pair of non-conference conference wins Saturday in Belgrade. The Wolfpack knocked off Billings West 11 to zero in a game in game one, excuse me, and followed that up with an 11 9 win over Belgrade. The Wolfpack bats won fire with seven home runs across the two wins. Kenny Goodet hit a leadoff home run to start the opener. That was one of four Wolfpack homers in that game one. Zoe Allen had another one of those home runs. And in the second game, Allen hit two more long balls for three total on the day. Huge day for Zoe Allen, three home run day in two games. That's a big day. Ella Farrell also had a standout day for the Wolfpack by tossing a five-inning shutout against Billing West. While allowing just one hit, Farrell got done at the dish as well with a two-run home run in that win. The defending state champions are now 11-2 overall in the season, so we'll definitely keep an eye on the pack softball team as the postseason approaches as they chase back-to-back -back state titles. We have one other softball game from last week to look at that had some interest here in the Valley. Whereas the Flathead Bravettes and Columbia Falls Wildcats met for a non-conference matchup last Tuesday in Sea Falls. The Wildcats pitcher Hayden Peters tossed a complete game after overcoming a three-run home run by Flathead's Caden Lake. Lake finished with a total of five RBIs, but Peters managed to go to distance and get the win for the Wildcats. The Bravettes jumped out to a 7-0 lead before the Wildcats stormed back with, a, with 10 unanswered runs, thanks in part to a string of Flathead airs. Only four of the Wildcats' runs were earned. Maddie Moultrie, Demi Renzel, and Chevelle Bradford all had RBI singles in the sixth inning as the Wildcats racked up five runs in the sixth to take the lead and ultimately beat the Bravettes. Big win for the defending Class A state champions to knock out a Valley foe who plays at the Class AA level in non-conference action. All right, moving along to track and field where the Whitefish Arm Invitational took place last week and the Whitefish track and field team made the most of their home Track advantage with a strong showing at the Whitefish Arm Invitational over the weekend with the Bulldogs. Boys and girls sweeping their team titles with a pair of first place finishes. Brooks Zatoni and Rachel Wilmot helped lead the Whitefish girls to the team title with Zatoni taking home first place in both the 100 and 200 meter dash and Wilmot landed in second in both events. Zatoni's 100 meter dash time of 12.32 seconds was good for second best across Class A so far this year. As for the Bulldogs boys, Carson Crack led the way with the wins in the high jump and 110 meter hurdles. So overall, a huge day for the Bulldogs track and field program on their home turf. Gotta love that. 
Big congrats to the Bulldogs boys and girls for picking up wins at the Arm Invitational. All right, speaking of Whitefish, let's close out this week's prep sports action with a look at our Hagado Media Group Montana poster player of the week. This week's poster player is Whitefish baseball third baseman and pitcher Michael Miller. Miller struck out five across five and two-thirds innings versus Eureka earlier this week and had himself a huge day a few weeks back when Whitefish and Columbia Falls battled in the infamous cat-dog baseball game. Gotta love that cat-dog rivalry. Always a little bit of extra juice there when those two teams meet. And in that, in that rivalry game a few weeks back, Miller helped the Bulldogs win by slugging a pair of home runs and picking up the win on the mound after tossing five innings of three-run baseball. Coming up clutch to propel your team past the rival is what athletes live for, so this poster play of the week nod is well-deserved. Overall, big congrats to the Bulldogs and Miller, who has got it done at the plate and on the mound for picking up this Hagado Media Montana poster player of the week. All right, moving along to that NFL news I mentioned as we had a number of Montana and Montana State football products who are going to get the opportunity to play their way into a spot with an NFL team. Last year, Bobcat product Ty Okada and great standout and Kalispell native Bitcher High product Patrick O'Connell and Okada both turned camp invites into a spot on the 53 roster for the Seahawks. So th there's a real chance some of these guys can land with an NFL team, stick on a roster. That's what it's all about. Let's look at some of the guys who are going to have that opportunity, starting with Montana State tight end, Sunburst Montana product, Trent Pickering, who played six-man football back in the day. He landed a rookie camp invite with the New York Giants. You look at Pickering's numbers, they don't necessarily jump off the page as a receiver. 49 catches, 754 yards, and six touchdowns in his time with the Bobcats. But he's 6'4", 245, and experienced, blocking for a high-level rushing attack. So good blocker, and that offense didn't really highlight tight ends as pass catchers all that often. Yes, a lot of red zone activity, but, you know, there's a lot of room to grow as a player for Pickering. At the next level, maybe a more pass-happy offense, and his blocking prowess definitely gives him a good chance of landing a spot with the Giants. That's definitely going to be something to keep an eye on is his ability as a blocker early on. The other Montana State product to land with an NFL squad is a former Bobcat QB, Casey Bauman, who transferred to Augustana University after spending three years with the Bobcats. He signed a deal with the Los Angeles Chargers, an undrafted free agent deal. Bauman's playing time with the Bobcats was sparse, but he threw for 29 touchdowns and 2,878 yards for Augustana University last year, so the production was there when given the opportunity. Maybe didn't finish his career as a Bobcat, but still – Part of the Bobcat lore, and it's worth mentioning for sure. Going to keep an eye on how those former Bobcats do this, you know, training camp and all that, and we'll keep you updated. Now, joining Pickering with the New York Giants will be Montana Grizzly safety and Nash Fouch, who also received a mini camp invite with New York. Fouch was a very hard nosed, tough player for the Grizz, known for his big hits and physical play. Fouch racked up 184 tackles across three years as a starter for the Grizz, and looks to me like a real candidate to land a spot as a special team player at the pro level based off his attributes. I mentioned physical play, tough, hard-nosed, well-coached. Bobby Houck has special team expertise. So you start doing the math there. He's a guy who could definitely play his way into a roster spot as a tackling machine on special teams. So you can't teach toughness. You can't teach the ability to swarm to the football. And that's some Fouch is really good at. Has both those attributes. Also, Big Apple Bound will be former Grizz punter Travis Benham, who earned a mini camp invite with the New York Jets. Benham transferred to Montana for a senior year after spending time with San Jose State, where he saw major playing time in 2022. Prior prior to his time, excuse me, at San, San Jose State, Benham played for played both football and baseball at the coll collegiate level for Lewis and Clark. College, so you know the athleticism's there. Two sport, two sport college athletes are hard to come by nowadays. That's a rare thing to see. So Benham definitely has the athleticism. Hunters, you don't always hear them as athletes, but he definitely is an athlete. So Benham averaged over forty yards per punt last season and had a long of sixty yards. So we'll keep an eye out on how Benham fares competing for a spot with the Jets. Let's round this out. The Grizz and Bobcats products to land with NFL squads with Grizz center A.J. Forbes. Forbes was the anchor of the Grizzlies offensive line the past few years and was a team captain in 2023. Forbes transferred to Montana after starting his college career as a member of his home state's Nebraska Cornhuskers. Sometimes it's really hard to evaluate an offensive lineman, how they're going to perform at the next level because the stats and the metrics aren't really as easily available to compare. Maybe you could compare offensive linemen to another through you know, pro football focus grades, if you're familiar with that. Long story short, it's not like the skill positions, the receivers, the quarterbacks, the running backs, even linebackers. It's easy to look at their numbers 
and go, okay, this guy was a standout player. Offensive line makes it a little more tough, but one thing I will say about Forbes, everything I've ever read or heard about AJ Forbes, he seems like a natural leader and a high IQ player on the field. And that is exactly what you want from your center because they are essentially the quarterback of the offensive line. You know, I might have played a little center in my short lived high school football career. So I got a lot of respect for the centers out there. You get beat up a lot, usually don't get a lot of attention unless you make a mistake, maybe botch a snap, get beat or something like that. But that being said, Big kudos to Forbes on at least having that opportunity to land with the Seahawks. One of those guys, everything you ever read about the Grizzlies football team the last year, he was an anchor of that program. One of those guys who can be counted on as a leader and a captain on the field and going to get the chance to play at the next level. Maybe join former college teammate Patrick O'Connell with the Seahawks. Very, very cool. All right. That will round that rounds out our Montana and Montana State products. We'll have a shot to land with an NFL team. We'll keep an eye out for other news to come through. Reigning Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, Alex Gubner's name has been floating around online as a potential Grizz product who might get a mini camp or undrafted deal in the near future. So we'll definitely keep you updated on next week's show if any more NFL related uh, news rolls in for our Grizz or Bobcat products. So moving along, let's close this thing out with a look at an interesting story that I definitely. Definitely did not have on my bingo card for 2024, and that story involves the Valley's pro baseball team, the Glacier Range Riders, and the National Park Service in a dispute over the Range Riders' arrowhead-shaped logo. This story made national headlines, and the Associated Press actually did a report on the dispute. According to the story from the AP, the Range Riders say the National Park Service is making, quote, unwarranted and relentless, quote, unquote, trademark claims. Here's an excerpt from the article by Amy Beth Hansen of the Associated Press. Quote, the Glacier Range Riders and Kalispell, Montana, members of the Major League Baseball Partner League, applied for several trademarks and logos for the team that began playing in 2022. The logos include a mountain goat wearing a park ranger hat, a bear riding in a red bus like the Glacier National Park Tour buses, and an arrowhead with the letters RR in it. In it. The interior department opposes the use of the arrowhead logo. The agency filed a protest with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, which rejected arguments that the baseball team's arrowhead logo would be confused with the park services and create a false association between the two. The federal agency then filed a letter of opposition last June, creating a legal case that the team owners say will be costly to defend. A final hearing is tentatively scheduled for next week. Team spokesperson Alexa Bel Castro said... The Park Service complaint notes that when the team revealed its logos, it acknowledged that Glacier National Park was its inspiration. Range Riders protected the Flathead National Forest Reserve from poachers, wildfires, and timber thieves before Glacier National Park was formed. Little context, or the, meaning the Range Riders, that's where they got their origin from back in the day. You know, they were people protecting the parks and all that. So back to the story here. The brand is really inspired by the founding of the National Park Service, the Golden Age, when it was just getting started at the turn of the 20th century. Jason Klein, partner with the sports marketing firm Brandy Rose, said when the logos were revealed, that was the goal. And then he said, what I love about it is that no other brand in all sports has adopted the National Parks as an inspiration. All right. That was the end of the AP article. A daily Interlake article on the dispute mentions that the cost of defending the logo could cost the Range Riders team and ownership up to $500,000 to defend you can check out the Daily Interlake website for the full article. That all being said, we'll definitely keep an eye on that ongoing dispute between the Range Riders and the National Park Service. Definitely an unfortunate situation all, all around that you hope gets resolved before it gets too ugly. National Park Service, Glacier Park, all that. Such a big impact in the Flathead Valley. And then the Valley's pro baseball team having such a great impact on the community. You don't want to see those two clashing. Hopefully they can work that out. That gets resolved and it all gets thrown under the rug as the sports fan and the person who likes Glacier Park in me. That's what I'm going to, where I'm going to leave it at. So that all being said, kind of an interesting show, some NFL talk, little Range Riders legal dispute talk, and a lot of good prep sports stuff. But that is going to do it for this week's Interlake Sports Now. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to check out the show. Thank you, as always, to Nomad GCS for the support and Hagano Media Group Montana for highlighting our poster player of the week. So that being said, I'm Josh Dugan, and I'm out.